Welcome to this week's Legislative Update. I'm Jim Baumgart, your host. Thank you very much for joining us. And by us, I mean my guest, Cal Potter, who has, uh, for this program and the next uh, three programs this month, uh, we are going to be talking about uh, uh, issues that are uh, important to all citizens of this country uh, with the uh, um, issue that took place in Virginia um, and uh, the deaths of an unfortunate person uh, because uh, certain groups wanted to have the right to free speech uh, turned out to be not so free for the person that got beat up and the person that got killed. And so it is important for people uh, in the public to uh, discuss issues when they become serious. And this is a serious one, Cal Potter. Yes, it is. Anytime you have people who are, are subject to uh, violence, uh, we need to, not to talk about it. And I, from my communication with people on this topic and others, I see, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about particularly what has happened after the Civil War and what has happened in the society relatively recently. Um, when we talk about uh, racial equality, um, the big change that occurred in this country was in the 1960s. I mean, we're talking about you know 50, 60 years ago. That's not, not very not long. Not in the history of mankind. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people haven't progressed very much since the 1960s. Unfortunately, I run into a lot of people, and I have to bite my tongue sometimes because I know that person, or it's a situation where you're you're sort of a social situation, and you don't want to tell that person you're as dumb as a box of rocks. You don't know your history. You don't know the, the situation, but yet you have a big mouth. And, you know, you can't say that. You like to say it, but you don't. But the only thing you can do is very conservatively try to educate people and have them be aware of the fact that there's a lot going on in wh why we're in the, the boat we're in today. Sure. Well, one of the things I want to do in this week's program is um, we have about nine um, white supremacists group in Wisconsin. Uh, three of them are the, the, the bigger ones, the Ku Klux Klan, the neo-Nazis, and the white supremacists, which sort of is part and parcel of a group of them, but there is one that is a little larger. So that when we can remind people um, that uh, um, some of the stuff uh, for the citizens is so new they haven't um, uh, in, been involved in the, you know, around when the Ku Klux Klan was formed or the, or the neo-Nazis. So let me just start out with the neo-Nazis. This is a group that formed, according to Wiedepe, uh, the, the uh, uh, after World War II, uh, and people uh, continued some of the themes that Nazi Germany had, you know, of, uh, the Jews are bad, you know, the minorities, the, the uh, handicapped are, 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 are not. Um, and most of these people that got involved in these, this neo-Nazi thing uh, were never to, in Germany, never saw the no, concentration didn't camp. fight in the war. I know. And they just hate people. I mean, yeah. they, because they're, whatever reason, uh, uh, they haven't been given a good shake with uh, maybe an education that they, they could have gotten or good paying jobs, and now they're, they're looking to blame Jews Someone and else. Catholic. Yeah, Jews sure. and Catholics. And this is a common theme that goes way back in our history that when somebody hasn't uh, fared well, uh, they look for a reason other than themselves or you know, the, the economy where people have most of the money and they, they call the tunes and the little guy in the bottom can only blame blacks and Jews. So yeah. uh, anyway, the neo-Nazi thing, I, I saw a, an item in the paper, a, a political cartoon uh, showing uh, two young people watching TV asking, uh, apparently the grandfather, uh, he was sitting in his wheelchair with his World War II hat on, uh, and he was saying, oh yeah, I have objected to the Nazis all the way through Europe, I was talking about World War II, and uh, willing to stand up and, and uh, be counted. And um, So maybe you can add a little bit to this uh, um, phenomena of uh, the neo-Nazis. Well, they are many times uh, very dysfunctional people. Uh, like you said, uh, low on educational level, 
um, have a lot of problems maybe holding a job, and they're looking for a camaraderie uh, in viewpoint that someone else is to blame, and they look around the world and they concoct uh, solutions and conclusions that are not based on any fact. Mm -hmm. um, we talk today about people who don't like black people because they say, well, in the inner city there's crime and there might be uh, poverty and so on. But uh, when we look at why these situations exist, these poverty situations, are because we have segregated the society. Milwaukee is one of the most segregated cities in the United States. We don't talk about it, but we ought to. Mm -hmm. um, and you look at uh, Ozaukee County and Waukesha County and Washington County, um, those people are mostly white, a lot of them white flight from the city. Uh, and they, they Part of the cause for their the black... Uh, sure, and they don't say it. They don't give a damn once they get out of the city. Sure. And then they say, well, Milwaukee gets too much in social service money or they get too much in school aids or too much in shared revenue or whatever it happens to be. Well, in many cases, considering the problems that Mayor Barrett has in that city, he ought to have more money to try to address some of these problems so that uh, the people who are impacted most by poverty are given some help. And actually, uh, Mary. Barrett uh, and bringing back the city back to life has done an amazing job uh, it, with, uh, in the sense that uh, he had a lot to work with at times. Just uh, no. the high unemployment and the, uh, the the violence that takes place. The uh, people, one you know, the uh, one uh, person uh, uh, family uh, leader and and children and forty percent unemployment rate in the yeah. inner city. Yeah, and right across the border. Is almost non-existent unemployment, and uh, why why hasn't our society been able to bring them together so that they that mix can take place where some of those individuals that um, have the skills can uh, benefit from the same benefits that are, are are right across that border. Sure, and, and you know the area of uh, discrimination are based on uh, religion. I mean, one of the reasons why a lot of these. Uh, Groups have been anti-Catholic is because the, the the initial migration into this country was the WASPs, the White Anglo-Saxon Protestants. They came from Northern uh, and Western Europe. Later on came the Polish and the Italian Catholics and the Irish Catholics. This very poor people needed to have a place to go because they were very disadvantaged, or in the case of the Irish, starving to death, literally. Mm -hmm. And they came into communities and oftentimes took jobs that were difficult to do. Uh, it's like Mexicans today oftentimes sure. take difficult jobs. And washing dishes and, sure. you know. And people look at that and all of a sudden there's a difference in religion, difference in culture, and all of a sudden people, are, they become the scapegoats. Right. You know, you look at Jewish people, for example, they lived, a, they had a different culture. Um, European culture oftentimes forbade uh, involvement in banking and charging of interest for money. The Jewish community didn't have that prohibition. They got into the financial community and they became the bankers. <laughs> and, and so the people look at that and say, well, somehow those people are screwing us because they're in that profession. Well, there's a, there's a cultural and religious reason why this developed the way it did. So, you know, knowledge is important. The problem is we've got, I see in our society, uh, a very high level of, of civic illiteracy and historical illiteracy. Absolutely. And these people oftentimes in their illiteracy don't know they don't know. Well, and, and you, you have, we have the uh, uh, Historic Society and the Museum and when uh, programs come up to inform, um, you'll see some people there, but not a lot of people to educate themselves. Let's touch a little bit on the Ku Klux Klan before we run out of time. Uh, they began, founded in 1866, shortly, shortly after the Civil War. And by 1870, all the southern states had uh, chapters of the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, and uh, they uh, went and uh, suppressed and victimized newly freed slaves and Republicans, uh, people who were in charge and, and shortly after the war. Uh, and it became a fight for power. And uh, initially, the Ku Klux Klan didn't have the power, and so it was night uh, time and uh, hangings and uh, burnings of crosses. Um, intimidating blacks, they couldn't slave them. They weren't enslaved anymore, but they intimidated Well, they needed them. Right. Yeah, they needed them to work and pick cotton in the fields, and yet, uh, um, you know, if they look at uh, 
a white woman going by the wrong way, he, they, they could be hung the next evening. And, 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 uh, uh, and that happened because uh, there were times in the South, uh, especially uh, later on when the power had shifted, uh, where there were hangings almost uh, uh, weekly down in the South, and uh, that was what was reported and not what was not reported, which was probably many more. Well, the society, American society, handled the post-Civil War era very, very poorly. Um, right after the war, the Union soldiers did occupy the South, but uh, it wasn't for, for very long after when Johnson and ensuing presidents just didn't want to do that anymore, so they kind of turned the South back to the South. Right after the war, there were some blacks that were elected to Congress and into public office. And after that, uh, once the, the Union soldiers and the occupation left, the Southern whites took over again. Right. And the, the KKK was an example of intimidation uh, to keep back blacks in their place. And then, of course, with the era of the Jim Crow laws, which were the, you know separate drinking fountains and separate schools and couldn't vote and all the, the codified. Or, or you'd basic. have to pass a difficult test to be able to vote. And if you couldn't read because you didn't have schools, uh, you're not likely not uh, been able to vote. Right, and the KKK was uh, something that occurred after the war. But interesting enough, one of the strongest times was the 1920s, under a very conservative uh, political scene under Coolidge, Hoover, and Harding. Um, the Ku Klux Klan would march in Washington, D.C. Thousands of people would walk with these hoods and these white robes down the streets of Washington, D.C. And even New York and some places uh, like that had, had those type of activities. And interesting enough, that Donald Trump's father was arrested in New York in the 1920s as one of those who was involved in the KKK. Well, and, and my father, who was a, a little 40-acre farmer uh, in the town of Gibson in Manorock County, re mentioned one time he was standing uh, along the road that went by our, our, our farm. and. Uh, one evening, and this Model T or whatever it was went by. It had four or six people dressed in Ku Klux Klan outfits. So, um, because of the depression, because of the uh, power struggle, um, the Ku Klux Klan uh, became very powerful, and nobody spoke against nope. the, the 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 death and destruction that was taking place. And we get uh, later on uh, the results of of uh, our inactivity. Then. That's why it's important for us to take a little time to talk about the issues uh, that, uh, and, and the historic aspect of it in true terms rather than the emotional terms like, you know, Catholics are bad, or Jews are, you know, got all the money, uh, rather than, than uh, uh, the way it really is. Right. The, the whole issue of uh, the Ku Klux Klan is one of those that, uh, it was allowed to fester and become institutionalized because both parties didn't do very much about it in the 1920s. Matter of fact, Woodrow Wilson, as nice a man he was, he was a Democrat, progressive individual, but he was from a, he was a president of a Southern college. He was a racist. He was sexist. He was against the 19th Amendment allowing women to vote. So you had you had the Hoover Coolidge uh, administrations, Harding in the 20s, who were were supportive of the KKK and not civil rights, and you had Democrats sitting on their hands because, in many cases, you had Democrats in office down south, including Congress, and why were they Democrats? They were really Dixiecrats, is because Abe Lincoln was a Republican. And so you had an era there where there was no spokesman for civil rights. It didn't come around, really, of any merit until Lyndon Johnson in the 1960s. Yeah. I want to thank uh, Cal Potter for joining me, and I want to thank you for joining us. Take time. Take time to uh, listen to what uh, people with, with uh, good scholarly backgrounds have uh, on these subjects because you have to be involved or else we have problems that we, we, we shouldn't have. Uh, and I want to thank you for coming. Until next week, this has been Legislative Update.